today should be a fun day, don't you think? Well, good day, my friends. As you saw, we are taking the Warner Brothers tour here in Hollywood, California. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Starting out to check in, they have the authentic costume from Arrow, Green Arrow. That is Supergirl, her costume, and Flash. These are Harry Potter, and the one on the left is actual Daniel Radcliffe's. From the Sorcerer's Stone, and the other one is Rupert Grint's. Oh my god, I didn't think I was going to buy anything here, but I, I may actually have to buy a Golden Carrot Award. I may have to. That's just too funny. The 30 bucks, so we'll probably get one on the way out. James Dean Red Jackets. Of course, he made Rebel and Giant. This soundstage when Warner Brothers. Here's kind of a cool photo op you can do. These giant statues of Looney Tunes here in front of Warner Brothers. Cool, it's got the water tower in there with a bunch of the history in here. And some memorabilia. Let's see what they got. Here they are building the lot that we're on in Burbank. Harry Warner right there. And this was stage 16. Kane and Mabel, Clark Gable, and Marion Davies movie right there. Here they have, oh that's cool, Jack Warner's phone book. And you see at the very top of the very first page is Cecil B. DeMille. That's when you know you're high roller. And you see down here, dancing teacher. Um, very bottom, Salvador Dali. Wow. Walt Disney. Irene Dunn, Olivia de Havilland. Miss Betty Davis. Here are the hardbound scripts that Jack Warner had hardbound. You see Dawn Patrol, Mildred Pierce, Battle Cry, Now Voyager. Four Daughters, What Happened to Baby Jane, Bonnie and Clyde, Bullet. Wow. Of course, Looney Tunes. How can you not love it? Mel Blank, I got to do some really cool vlogs with his son, Noel. Look him up on my channel, he tells me all about his dad. Here they're showing Dallas, and here is JR, one of JR's hats, and his boots from the original run. It's pretty cool. Who killed JR? That was the question on everybody's mind. That is Phoebe's guitar from Friends. The whole run. That's really cool. I did not care for the show, but my parents did, so I knew about it. Wasn't it Smelly Cat? She had a song called Smelly Cat or something. That awesome replica water tower. And then if you're here in person, you look on the floor, it kind of makes more sense. It's actually the entire lot. So you can see the sound stages and everything from the early days right here. Wow, that is so historic. That is Al Jolson's microphone from The Jazz Singer, 1927. The first talking picture. The movie that changed it all. A whole different art form. Everyone, you know, before was all about the facial expressions and the physical, and this made it verbal. People thought it was, uh, older actors thought this was like the easy way out. Anybody can talk, it takes more to emote with your eyes. So this is groundbreaking. Changed all the studios overnight. Now that you know these are all like studio sound stages, isn't that kind of cool? One of the things I'm most excited about was I know that on this tour I get to see the uh, street from this. Music Man, and I love Blazing Saddles. That was filmed here too, of course. You know that famous scene of Harmony Corman running into the studio out front. <laughs> These are more memorabilia. These are Maggie's boxing gloves from Billion Dollar Baby. Hillary Swank's boxing gloves. And it was a Clint Eastwood picture. They're showing all the shows that are filming right now on the lot. Jennifer Hudson show, Young Sheldon, Call Me Cat, saw Abbott up there on the last Abbott Elementary. 
So the first thing they tell you is uh, you can't do any video on the tour, but you can take photos. And they try and like kind of gear the tour individually towards the group. So they ask what we were all into. Some people said Gilmore Girls, Pretty Little Liars. I said I was into the older movies and the horror movies. So she geared our tour towards that. The first thing we saw was this barn. It was made for the Alan Ladd movie, Santiago. And it was used for the end credits in Aquaman. And the other side of it was used for the paintball fight in Big Bang Theory. Then we saw these cabins over here that were built and they've been used for like seven different episodes of Pretty Little Liars. It's also been used for Shameless. Then we saw this dead end and they said this was where Lorelai's car broke down in Gilmore Girls and everybody was like, oh yeah. So I guess that was a big deal. <laughs> Now, as we were driving, they told us this is where they filmed the Jeep scene racing through the woods for Jurassic Park with Jeff Goldblum. They just, uh, she said, look behind you. You don't see any of the buildings that we just saw. So they just switched back and forth, frontward and backward, racing and speeding up the film to make that effect. But it's a, actually a very short drive that we took. And then we saw this house, which I didn't recognize, but they said it was in Pretty Little Liars of someone's house. And everybody was like, oh, yeah. Then we saw the lagoon, and they said there was a famous scene in ER where George Clooney saved some people in the, the lagoon there, and that was all filmed right there. And then this building was the cafe in Million Dollar Baby with Hilary Swank and Clint Eastwood having their scenes outside of it. And then we start working our way into some of the sets. And right here, they said this would double as... The bus station in Gilmore Girls, the police station in The Rookie, and several other things. And she said right there you could put a bus bench, and that was the bus station for Gilmore Girls. Then as we came up here, they said this is where LeBron drops his son off in Space Jam 2 for uh, video game camp. So we start working our way around, and we start entering the Midwest town, the Anywhere Midwest USA. And I recognized it right away when we got up here because it's the town square in Dukes of Hazard, the seasons that weren't in Georgia. And I noticed that right away from it. And also this town square has been used in tons and tons of things, including the music man. All the parade scenes are right here. And I noticed that church, I was pretty sure, and I asked her, I said, is that from uh, East of Eden with James Dean? And she said it was. And then I recognize this is where the parade at the end of the Music Man, where everybody comes filing out in their marching band uniforms, the parade starts. It was right there out of that building. So then we start walking over here to this corner, and she explains that was in Gremlins, and that's where he works at the bank, and the old lady's in there giving him a hard time and everything, and she ends up getting her comeuppance later. But they also said that that was the only scene in the Bonnie and Clyde movie they filmed here. They got back and realized they hadn't shown one of the bank robbery scenes, so they filmed it right there. And then we went in this building, which was actually right across the street from it. And when we started walking in, she said that this was a set that they would film in, but basically... When we walked in, she said, do you recognize it? It's the Gilmore Girls Supermarket. And she said, look up. When we film in here, you know, we have to account for sound and weather. That's why a lot of times we film things on the sound stages and not here on a, this set. But as we looked around, she said, this may also look familiar to you if you like the music man. This was the Billiard Hall, which I immediately got excited because I love that movie. And the billiard hall is kind of the catalyst of this whole thing. When the professor comes to town, he makes the billiard hall seem like it's going to ruin all the, the young boys and it's going to corrupt them all. So he's trying to get them all to be in a boys band and getting their parents to buy band instruments. So it was both places. It was the billiard hall and Music Man and it was, uh, it was the Gilmore Girls grocery store little supermarket place. And then she pointed out the window right around now. And said, if you look at the town square, you can remove that gazebo. It was used in Dukes of Hazzard. Um, they removed the gazebo for the Music Man and put a statue there. That was where Norbit's Park was, right there. And uh, you can see that in a lot of different movies. They, they reuse this all the time and, and, like I said, can remove that anytime they want to very easily. So we start looking outside, and I'm getting antsy to go over to that church. <laughs> so we end up exiting through 
the front of the grocery store. And once we get out here, she said, this is where the last episode of Seinfeld was filmed. We're in there when they're in that like random town. It was right there. They said, even though Seinfeld filmed on another set, like soundstage or whatever, they can still come over here and film. And she showed us this being um, the holes in the ground. She said they would put parking meters, street signs, all kinds of props they could stick in there um, to use for whatever they're filming. So I thought that was pretty cool because you don't always get to see stuff like that and see how it's done. And then she pointed this out and said, this was the exterior of the bar in Shameless, but only the exterior, not the interiors. And she let us look inside as well, which I thought was kind of cool. Then we made it over the church and she said, you might recognize this from the Waltons. They use this church in the Waltons and they use three sides of the buildings for post offices and um, schools and stuff like that. But she also said this was the church from the Lost Boys. This was the church from Monster Squad. And she said, does anybody have any questions? And I said, can we go in? She said, sure. So she took us inside. And that's where the scene from the Lost Boys happens. So we actually do see the interiors of this in the Lost Boys. So that was really cool. And I took a lot of photos in here just because I just thought it was super cool. And I went over to both sides of the building, the entrances to kind of see what everything would have looked like, whatever they could film, what kind of options they had. So this was one of the other side entrances or exits that they filmed with. Just gives you an idea of how other things they can use in the movies. So we came out here and then I asked about East of Eden and she said, yes, it was. So she said, look over there. That's where the Burger King was in Monster Squad. So it was also the church in Monster Squad. And I was really excited because I love Monster Squad probably even more than Gremlins and Lost Boys. So we start walking through the town square and we come up to this house. And she says, this was the Geller house. This was Ross's parents. And this is the episode where they watched the prom tape. And she said, it's really noticeable from the inside because there's a staircase in there. And so we got to go in and take a look at the staircase. And she said, the staircase goes to nowhere. When they would walk up there into the top, there's just a little landing off to the right for the actors to stand. So it actually doesn't, you know, go anywhere at all. And then when we walked into the other room, I was able to turn around and look and you could see exactly right up there where the actors would stand off to the side so that they could clear the stairs for any kind of filming. So we walked through the house, which was kind of cool. I think they said this was also in Pretty Little Liars. A lot of the houses on this lot were used for diff different locations in Pretty Little Liars. They mentioned that several times because I kept going, everything was Pretty Little Liars uses everything. So we walk out the back of the house and we're walking over to the house next door and she points out that this, I believe, was Laura Lee's house from Gilmore Girls. And she said it's actually two houses. It's Suki's house on the other side, but right across from this, which would be the backyard, was Spencer's house from Pretty Little Liars. And it was also in Deadwood painted a different color, I think. So then I saw this. This is just fake shrubbery that they could use to cover up the barn if they needed to. But like I said, she said that this was Laura Lee's house, that she would come and go from the front doors. But the other side of it, the back entrance, is uh, Melissa McCarthy's character. So she said the interiors were only used for Melissa McCarthy's character. And they would film Laura Lee's house on a soundstage. So we actually got to walk through it. So if you're a, a fan of that show, Gilmore Girls... You probably recognize some of the scenes that would have been filmed in this house as we walk through. I actually don't know that show very well, so I couldn't really match up any of the scenes that happen here, but I just thought it would be cool to show it. And this is a, like a working set they could have used, so we're walking out the front door, and boom, that might be more of a recognizable side of the house that you've seen in the show. I thought that was really cool. And right across from it, they showed us this house, which they said was where um, Phoebe in Friends, where she goes to see her dad and finds out she has a brother. She pulls up right there in front. And then the other side of the house was used for another house in Pretty Little Liars. They just used a different, the other side because it has pillars and it looks kind of more fancier. So then as we walked right next door, I got excited because I, I recognized this right away. It was in Gremlins. But she says it was Plato's house in Rebel Without a Cause. It was the, uh, the, the old lady's house in Gremlins, the one that um, was causing the trouble in the bank. 
the uh, the gremlins are out front singing Christmas carols right there, and she slams the door in their face, and Spike goes up and rewires the wheelchair ramp, and then we see her going up the wheelchair ramp up the steps and goes flying out the window and everything at this house. I thought that was so cool. She said a lot of these houses, the fronts have been redone, but it was the house from Rebel. So then they told us here that James Dean was forced to live on the uh, on the lot and that he filmed one of his Rebel Without a Cause scenes coming out of here. And they said that he didn't like living on the lot and so he used to get his motorcycle and hide. And then when they would, they would yell action to film a scene for something, he would rev his engine and go riding through to ruin the takes. Gotta love it. <laughs> And then we started going through this older town and they pointed out this house, which they said is just a replica of the full house, fuller house set that they never used. It's just for Instagram photos for people that can't get to San Francisco. Kind of cool. And because full house was filmed on this lot and that is the building from small soldiers. That's the toy store. And it's also where Mia works in La La Land. She works in that cafe on the lot and she points out the window and says that she loves working where they filmed Casablanca and she points to the buildings across and says Casablanca was filmed there and they said they're not exactly sure which one of these storefronts Casablanca was filmed on but they do know it was filmed on this street um, but that's where she says it was in the movie right there so then we start driving along through some of the older parts of town and they show us this is the exterior of Abbott Elementary for the the new show and that um, if you look inside where the doors are open it's just a matte painting of a hallway there's no real hallway so it's just a television effect for when they're dropping off kids and kids are going into school so then we start driving off to the right is where the friends fountain was actually and then they were just showing us different things that were filmed out of here. I don't remember exactly what was filmed in this one. This was part of the old New York town, I, I believe. And they were showing us just like Shameless and various things. Pretty Little Liars all used these. And then this one they said Big Bang Theory used when they all went to see the extra seconds of Star Wars that were added. When they're waiting in line and Will Wheaton cuts in front of them and they get into a fight with them and then not get to see the movie that all happened right here so then they were showing us here that the, a lot of the superhero movies were filmed right over here because people could come out of a subway right there and it shows kind of like a city town they can dress up and really make it look like anywhere or anything and our tram tour continued up to where we got to go into a sound stage and this was the uh the sound stage for big bang theory originally but they told us that it's Bob Hart's Abishola is filming there, and that's what we got to see inside. Look at all the things that were filmed here. Oh my gosh, Mame, uh, Gremlins, all kinds of stuff. Casablanca, Giant. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Look at that. Auntie Mame, Bonnie and Clyde, Eraser, Outbreak, Falling Down, Dave, Batman Returns. And then, of course, Big Bang Theory for a very, very long time. <laughs> they said that they've named like five studios after popular shows. And there you can see Gremlins 2 was even on there. Blade Runner, Starman. So this they were showing us since we couldn't show you. Like, once we went onto the set, we got to see all the sets of Bob Hart's Abishola. But we weren't allowed to film any of it. Um, that was just the rule. So we came back out, continued on, and across from there was the Friends stage. And they said that all but one, I think the first season, all but that was filmed on this stage up here. And so they ended up moving the set uh, of Big Bang Theory and Friends both over to the museum, but that they named the, the stage after Friends, which I thought was kind of cool. So Friends, um, Two and a Half Men, The Big Bang Theory, ER and something else are all named, have stages named after them. And there's a parking spot for the show we saw. And this, they were just showing us, this was the Two and a Half Men sound stage. Charlie Sheen would have worked on, John Cryer for all those years. Ashton Kutcher, that stage is named after them as well. And then we went to the museum tour, which is in another video. Go watch that video tomorrow. Here's the Friends Fountain. They bought it from Columbia Pictures. So it was in uh, Three Stooges, it was in I Dream of Genie, The Monkeys Bewitched. 
It's been on a lot of different things. But probably everybody knows it from friends. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this tour. I had a blast. I will see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye.